My name is David Gage. I live in Kingsbury, uh, Kingsbury um, Originally, I, had a, I, had, I wrote a little bit today. I started the thing out with a little bit of anger, so I'm going to leave that part out. And also, I mean, it was kind of directed towards Mr. Blackwell, and he you was know, not here, so. Um, I was I was at the last meeting, and uh, there was there were some things that, that were said, you know, directed towards us in the, in the community. It wasn't very proper. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the things that really bothered me the most during the last meeting was uh, that their own engineer, Mr. Blackwell, who's not here now, so I, I guess it'd be you, um, would not guarantee the liner would never fail after being asked several times, and I saw that you were asked tonight if you could guarantee that it would never fail. And you said the same response, is that you're not in the business of guaranteeing things. We need a guarantee. Uh, you know, this, this in itself is very discomforting. Uh, the reason, uh, reason being is that everyone knows that nothing lasts forever. He himself knows that there is no way of proving that. Fact is, and this is why everyone was uh, was here last time, and this time as well, it will fail. Uh, maybe not in 20 years or your lifetime or mine or our children, but it will fail. What happens then? Do you even care? Uh, that was a rhetorical question, as obviously the answer is no, you don't care what happens when it fails. You only care if the dollar signs fill in your bank account. You and your team know the risk, but you continue to pursue this atrocity in the face of the risk involved, not only to yourself, but to the many people across the state of Texas. You have senators, city elected officials, county elected officials, multiple water boards, the railroad commission in opposition of your endeavor. Yet it falls on deaf ears as your eyes look for the money. This leads to the next point I want to make as I am one of those people who enjoy looking at history. Learning things I have no need to, but every once in a while has a purpose. One thing I have learned is that history teaches us things to better our future or avoid uh, repeating mistakes. There are a few examples in history for reference in this situation. You ever heard of Eric Brockovich? You heard about it twice when it was mentioned. <laughs> uh, that wasn't just a movie. It was a true story where a known contaminant was used in the cooling towers of a natural gas facility where it was assured to be contained and safe. But somehow runoff from the chemical dissolved in the water went to unlined nearby ponds and seeped in to the groundwater. Sounds very similar. But not only that, we should learn from the industrial age in America where we learned air pollution is a big deal. People couldn't breathe. Now we have the EPA to regulate uh, that to, re to regulate that, or else we would be like China, wearing masks everywhere. I don't want my children running around wearing masks just to breathe. Business people in that time fought regulation because of money. They wanted to continue pumping smog into the air uh, because of money. They didn't care. Neither do you, but we do. We like clean air and clean water. We need it. Our livestock needs it, our crops need it, and all the surrounding cities need it. It is up to us in this community to protect it for everybody, not just us. As you can see, that does not matter to the people of this community and of the area over the recharge zone. We all feel an obligation to ourselves to be responsible about the very fact that we do on our uh, what we do on our properties can affect many people. We are conscious and concerned about uh, about that. Otherwise, none of us would be in this building right now. I could go on much longer about history stuff, but I'll move on. Hopefully, you got the point. As to your claim uh, before. Uh, this was this was in the last meeting. Uh, this whole thing was corrected <laughs> uh, in response to the last meeting. But uh, there was a claim last time that the water is, is already dirty and contaminated. Um, and I just wanted to know where was the test supporting that claim? 
And uh, why are we not being told not to drink the drink our water from these aquifers? Why is the gang still using them for their city water and other municipalities looking to us to use our aquifer? Because the, the claim is completely false. You have nothing to back that claim, and there's uh, plenty of support that your dump will contaminate it. You know that, and that's why you made the false claim. It's already done, so what does it matter? Uh, thing is, I'm sure there has already been extensive testing on the waters of these aquifers, where your dump will be squatting on the recharge zone of, not to mention Nash Creek and Guadalupe River. Now I wanted to get to the nuts and bolts, and I have reading material here. I'm not going to go through all that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of the science between the, the plastics and stuff. I actually did my research, and uh, as stated before, the EPA does know that these plastic liners fail. And uh, that's what's in here is research supporting that. Um, now I believe that the research that I have is just for the plastic liners, but it shows that the plastic liner fails. Now everybody knows that the clay is not going to contain because the earth moves. It, the, the clay cracks, it opens a way for the contaminant to get down into our groundwater. So once now we're proven with your composite system, and a composite system is basically um, two materials put together to make one uh, working right. That's what I was thinking. So we have two failed systems acting as one system. They're both proven to be failed systems. Acting as one system, you're gonna call it the composite and say that it's working. Uh, I actually don't believe that. <laughs> um, anyway, in other words, plastic liners do fail. When they do, it's only a matter of time to get through the clay barrier. Clay is another issue in itself. Yeah, one drop of water may take a very long time to get through some clay in a test tube, but everybody knows that a large amount of clay spreads, cracks, and breaks apart as earth shifts and moves. There will be seepage. There will be contamination of this thing over the aquifers. It's not a question of if, but when. As a side note, there is evidence showing that the area is on a fault line. Just recently, some rifts appeared on a nearby property that seems to have been from a small tremor or something. Long deep holes in the ground as if the earth fell out from underneath or went through a sieve. To tie this up, there is a multifaceted point to be considered here. The question is not whether, whether or not we need a dump. We do. Everybody agrees, uh, agrees on that, and we probably need one soon. There is also no question whether or not the liner will fail, as it will. As the EPA, they know there is no fail-safe liner out there. Uh, the main point is conservation of a very precious uh, resource. The question is what legacy do we want to leave? We are writing history at this very moment. The instance will most likely never uh, see a book and if we don't allow this dump to be placed uh, here, it will probably never be heard of. But if we do allow this dump to be built over the recharge zone of many people's water supply because somebody wanted to make a dollar off of their inherited property, when it fails, people will find out who it was. Do we want that on our hands? Is that the legacy we want to be remembered for? Do we want your name to cross the lips of the peoples whose lives are ruined, whose health is stripped away because we allowed something, uh, something we now, we now knowing, very well knowing, what it can and will do. Thank you. Jim Russell. Good evening, my name is Jim Russell. I live in Cibolo on the uh, western end of the county. I've come here tonight to lend my support to these fine citizens here who oppose this film. I'm, uh, I, I, this is my first meeting and I'm uh, fairly humbled by what I've heard tonight. Uh, a passionate group of citizens who are trying to protect their families, trying to protect their future, trying to protect their county and the water supply. My hat's off to all of you. Congratulations on a great effort. I, I, I hear some disappointing things too. We, we've kind of talked a lot about them. I'm, 
I'm disappointed that the citizens who get their water from the Edwards Aquifer have a right to clean water, but the citizens that get their water from the Carrizo Wilcox Aquifer do not have a right to clean water. That disappoints me. And I would like an answer to that question. That, that's, that's basic, that's so fundamental here. We're talking about TCQ's job of doing administrative things, engineering things. Let's talk about the right thing to do. Is it the right thing to do in a state that has droughts, that the straight, uh, state that is short of water, that a state that is having problems building infrastructure and maintaining because we have no water, and then you want to take a dump and put it right on top of a vital water supply for this area. And since the applicant is not here, I'm going to look at the applicant's camera and I'm going to look at you and say, buddy, your right to make a profit does not override these people's rights to clean water.